Greetings. Today, we will cover the types of medical device firms that must comply with the United States FDA evaluation and inspection requirements, the required documentation, potential violations, and when the appropriate procedures must be in place. This training video often refers to completed device evaluation, however, evaluation of incoming product and in-process work also require the same type of controls, according to Quality System Regulation Section 820.80 paragraphs A, B, and C. Product evaluation is required by the FDA Quality System Regulations and GMP. The device manufacturer, specification developer, remanufacturer, relabeler, or repackager must show, with documented evidence, that a component in process unit or completed device was processed according to the device master record and meets all of the acceptance criteria and specifications. A record form to be used during the process for recording the data should be designed and be made a part of the DMR. Decisions on what to test and how to test should be made during the product and process development phase. If these decisions were not made at the time, the firm should establish them retrospectively. Before the device is ready for full-scale production, the test and inspection decisions shall be completed and documented as test and inspection instructions or acceptance procedures and approved for use. It is a violation of the United States Food, Drug and Cosmetics Act to place inadequately evaluated devices into commercial distribution. It is also a violation of the quality system regulation to allow test and inspection procedures to evolve during ongoing production. The concern is that devices which are not adequately evaluated may not meet company quality claims. It is not acceptable for the facility to bypass their responsibility by simply not writing needed claims. Under Section 501C of the Food, Drug and Cosmetics Act, a device is considered adulterated if its purity or quality falls below what the company claims or is represented to possess. Although the firm must establish and maintain procedures for final device acceptance, there are situations where a simple data sheet or print may be referred to as the written acceptance criteria. For example, it is sufficient in some cases for a molded or machine component to only specify finished article dimensions. But it is always a good idea to include rationale for such decisions in the design review record. Together these documents can fully satisfy the required acceptance criteria. The Scope of Acceptance Activity The facility is to establish and maintain procedures for final device acceptance to ensure that each production run, lot, or batch of devices meets acceptance criteria. The devices shall be held in quarantine or otherwise adequately controlled until released. The devices shall not be released for distribution until the activities required in the DMR are completed, the associated data and documentation is reviewed, the release is authorized by the signature of a designated individual and the authorization is dated. The types of facilities responsible for meeting these requirements shall also identify by suitable means, the acceptance status of product, to indicate the conformance or non-conformance of these items. The identification of acceptance status shall be maintained during manufacturing, packaging, labeling, sterilization, installation, and servicing of the product to ensure that only those which have passed the required acceptance activities are distributed, used, or installed. See Section 820.86 of the QSR for details. If the facility has adequate test and inspection procedures and these are used by appropriately trained personnel, then there is a high probability the devices will meet the company device specifications for acceptable product and assure it is fit for intended use. Further, the data collected during in-process or completed device evaluation should be appropriate, complete, and correct. The data shows the good and bad points about the product and specific production activities. The data may be fed back into the quality system to identify and solve real problems, as well as to help maintain and improve the system.
developing evaluation specifications, in order to be assured a device is fit for the intended use, the firm should decide which characteristics of a device to test or inspect, and to what detail is required for conformance. As mentioned earlier, but worth repeating, decisions on what to test, and how to test are made during the product and process development phase and recorded in the device master record. These decisions are typically based on intended use, intended user, nature of the device and its components, intrinsic safety of the device, device reliability, overall process capability of the manufacturing operation, characteristics of test and inspection equipment and procedures, and performance margin of the device compared to the device specification. Device test and inspection specifications, as well as test and inspection procedures, should be carefully written and shall cover all appropriate points, in order to improve communication and reduce errors. Today we have covered product evaluation and inspection GMP requirements, and answered the most frequently asked question. If you would like a transcript of this presentation, see our website. Please note. We would be happy to answer additional questions, call us at 1-919-942-1634, no charge for Q&A, and thank you for listening.